Hello, my fellow crafters. I tell you, it's been a day already. I had to go to a dentist appointment for my youngest boy. And if you haven't heard lately here in the Pacific Northwest, we've been getting a lot of snow. I know a lot of other places have too. But where we are here in Northeast Oregon over the last four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, yeah, four days, we've gotten over 12 inches of snow, about 16 inches of snow actually. <laughs> and we've done really good about shoveling the sidewalks and stuff around our house, but we haven't had to go anywhere. So we didn't even think twice about the cars until today both my husband had to go to an appointment and I had to go to this dentist appointment for my son. And we sent our older boys out to start digging out the cars while well, it wasn't soon enough to get it all dug out before <laughs> I had to go, and so I'm out there trying to help them uh, shovel out the do the snow and you know scraping the snow off of the cars and and uh, got to a time where I'm just like, okay, guys, I gotta go. And so we had cleared out a good portion behind the car, like like where the tires could go, and I'm like, okay, I'm going. And so got in the car with my youngest son backed up, backed up just fine, started going forward. Well, unfortunately, we didn't clean out any of the stuff where we would be going forward out. We have a rather wide driveway, so we can, we have room to back up in our driveway and go forward before we get into the main road. And uh, I bottomed out. <laughs> because not only did we have the snow from the snowfall, but the snowplow had come through, and so it was, not just powdery snow anymore either, it was more com more packed snow from being snow plowed. So I bottomed out, got stuck, and uh, we tried digging it out, and uh, somebody stopped, a lady named Farah. Thank you, Farah. Farah stopped in her huge white pickup truck, and um, she asked, can I, can I help you guys out? And I'm like, oh, well, we're just trying to dig out. And she says, well, I can come give you a push. So she went around, turned around, come back, and then turned around and came back behind me. And so she's lining up and uh, got a coat or a blanket or something to put in between her truck and my little Buick car. <laughs> and um, so she's lining up to, to get ready to push us on out and she gets stuck. <laughs> so. Uh, we're trying to get her out now because if we can get her out we still have a chance of getting us out another guy in a pickup truck this time an old beat up you know 80s style pickup and got a big bale in the back of the bed to give it some weight on these icy snowy covered roads and he's he comes asking if we need some help so he's got a chain and he hooks it up to my Buick because I'm in front of the pickup truck, so he can't really get her out first unless he goes and pulls her out backwards from behind us. So he pulls me out and give, has to give it a big old jerk because I've kind of dug a tire down into the dirt. And um, so anyway, he pulls us out and he gets out of the truck after he gets me out and he, he comes up and he says, well, I just want to ask you something. He says, do you believe in God? And I'm like, yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I do believe in God anyway, and not just because God sent Morgan, that was his name. He had an accent, sounded like an Aussie accent, I don't know. He had an accent nonetheless, and <clears throat> so Morgan with an accent, and Farah with the big white truck, thank you so much for stopping to help. Even though we, we'd already called the dentist and told them that we weren't going to be able to make it today. So anyway, big day. And that's a wonderful welcome to my crafting channel, but I just wanted to share it. So anyway, my name is Carrie, and this is my crochet and craft channel. I love to crochet, I love to cross stitch, I do some sewing as well, um, but mostly I crochet these days. Um, it's a nice portable craft to take, take with you that's a lot speedier than like crochet is. So I just wanted to share some of the projects that I've been working on lately and also kind of ask uh, maybe a, some advice on one in particular that I've been having a hard time figuring out what I want to do with this yarn. So first of all, I want to show you the sweater that I've been working on. 
I don't typically like to make um, like wearables, fitted wearables like sweaters because you have to worry about gauge and and you know is it gonna fit right and then you know you end up making it and oh no it's like too small in one area do you have to remake the whole thing over again what do you do with it so I don't typically like to do wearables like this I like to do you know ponchos and shawls and that kind of stuff blankets <laughs> things where gauge doesn't really matter so much but I have noticed a considerable lack in my um, my wardrobe for sweaters and so I'm like well I don't want to go buy a sweater I want to make them so I'm starting to make some sweaters and this was one of them this is I don't have the pattern here with me but I know it's yarn inspirations and it's a free pattern I think it's called the crew neck sweater something like that um, I can put a link below if I remember to so this is a really pretty sweater and it's kind of funny because <laughs> the color that they show in the pattern, you know, in, as the example, was a gold color and I'm like, ah, that's not really my color. I don't, you know, mustard doesn't really look good on me. And I have this, the yarn that it uses is um, the Karen Soft. Is that what it is? Yes. Simply Soft. Karen Simply Soft. And I have a uh, a wide variety of colors in that already in my stash go figure and so I thought well I'll go see what colors I have surely I have you know a color with enough yarn already that I can use I think it takes six skeins of the yarn five or six depending on what size you make so I came out to my stash which is in one of these boxes right out here <laughs> and I was going through it and what do you think I found but six skeins of the very same gold that they used in the example and I was holding it up to my skin and I'm like well you know maybe not the best color for me but you know it's not quite the mustard that doesn't look good on me so I decided to go ahead with this gold I actually have several t-shirts and stuff that has this color in it so I already have coordinating a coordinating wardrobe with this sweater so this is what I've gotten done on it. I am quite almost done. I have made the side fronts. I've made the back and I've sewn them together at the shoulder and then added on the, this is, <clears throat> sorry, the neck is added on after you attach the fronts to the back. And then I have had done the side here, the edging where you put the buttons. The last thing I really have to do is I do the edging here that has the buttonholes for the buttons. So that's um, really all that I have left to do before then I can finish assembling it, you know, doing the side seam. And I have the sleeves also completely done except sewing them up and that's all done when you assemble it all together. So anyway, this is my Yarn Inspirations crew neck sweater in gold almost done with it and these are the buttons that I got to go on it come on focus there we go <laughs> so I got these buttons without the yarn with me so I there we go thought that would be a good match and I think it is I think it'll go nicely so anyway I've been working on that since last fall I took a break um, Mainly because I don't like the, I don't like sewing on the ends of rows and so the edging on the sweater, you have to space out, you know, 70 stitches along a side that has like 85 or whatever. So you have to try to figure out which stitches to skip and all that and I, it bothers me to do that. So I will, I will put the project away and not work on it for a while simply because I don't like doing that. So... But I'm getting inspired. I want to be able to actually wear this sweater before it's summertime and too hot to wear a sweater. So it was supposed to be done so I could wear it this winter. But we'll try to get it done before it's too hot to wear it. So uh, the next thing I was working on, I got this um, homespun thick and quick from Hirschner's. I got a pack of six of them. I don't remember what I paid for the packs. It wasn't terribly much though because um, I like to try to buy things on sale and I found these directions 
for the best blanket pattern for homespun by Lion Brand. And I think this yarnhookneedles.com is where I got this pattern from. And you can buy ad-free patterns on Etsy and Ravelry. Um, yeah, yarn hook needles. So I thought that would be a pretty nice blanket since it's designed especially for homespun. This is thick and quick uh, homespun, so I don't know if it's just making a larger blanket because of that or that this is the actual dimensions of the blanket. I never, I can't find the dimensions of the blanket on there, but this is turning out to be quite, quite a huge blanket. <laughs> Here, let's, this queen, this bed that I'm on is a queen size, excuse me. And uh, yeah, it fits, it fits from from the top of the bed to the bottom of the bed. Um, and once I'm done, I'm on the fifth skein, and I'm gonna probably do the sixth skein as well, mm -hmm. and it will be as wide as the queen bed is. So it would probably make a pretty nice blanket to put on a double bed or a, a twin size bed. So uh, yeah, it's making, making a much, lar much larger blanket than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, Cause in the directions she says, the size is big enough for two adults to cozy under. Well, I should say so. This is quite a big blanket. Um, I love the color. It's just a lavender. Um, some of my stitches have come unraveled here. Just using a size Q hook on this. And it's kind of a fun pattern. Um, anyway, love the color. I wasn't sure if I was going to make this to try to sell in my Etsy store or at crafting events. Not that crafting events are a really good place to sell afghans and stuff, but I just, I love the color. And it's so cozy. I made another blanket. One of my first blankets I made was actually out of homespun. Talk about difficult for a new beginner. Yeesh. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't know yet if I want to keep this or if I want to try to sell it. I'm leaning towards keeping because it's such a cozy, cozy blanket. So soft and fluffy. So anyway, this is the project I've really been working on lately. Um, taking up my time. So you can see these stashes of yarn back here. Um, speaking of sweaters, I found some chunky sweater patterns that I'm really interested in making. I haven't decided which one I'm going to make yet out of this yarn, but I got this from, uh, did I get it from Yarnspirations? I might have gotten it actually from Yarnspirations. The box is right there, but I don't have my glasses on so I can't see and I don't want to get, go get the box. So anyway, it's a pretty color. I love this color, aqua, and it's kind of a fuzzy yarn. You can see on there maybe if I can focus there we go see how fuzzy that is and I think this is the yarn it's they were saying it says it's a size four but it was it's a misprint and it's actually supposed to be a size five so anyway I think that'll make a really cozy sweater so um, I'll look through and, and figure out which sweater that I want to make out of this very pretty yarn it's just um, acrylic yarn, 100% acrylic, acrylic. So now the project that I would like some help with, I may have the pattern that I want to use, but I'm not completely sure. So I bought these yarn, these yarns with a different intention. I bought them intending to make my little capelets out of. Um, I like to make capelets and look, get them listed in my Etsy shop, sell them at events. Um, and so that was my intent when I bought these two yarns. These are the Huga by Red Heart. They're a size five bulky yarn. And you can see they have the little hairs on them. Fuzzy hairs. I love these. I've made some capelets with these and I just, they're so cozy and um, I love them. So 
I bought them with the intent of making capelets with them. And then I bought this Knob Hill Yarns Garden Glory. It's a variegated and I was thinking I was getting these to make capelets with too. I started making a sweater out of one of these and I'm not really content with how with the shortness of the colors it's you know I was hoping for a kind of a longer stripe I guess um, rather than just short blotches of color it just doesn't seem to suit well with you know long rows of stuff it seems more like better for shorter where you have a greater chance of pulling of the colors so I'm not entirely happy with this for pot or for capelets I might try making hats out of them, but I have this in other colors, so that's why I'm thinking of what else I can do with this. But this particular one matches these. <laughs> it's got those colors in there. And so I was, I found that all those coordinated, and I was starting to try to find, I thought maybe I could make an an afghan out of these and uh, so I was starting to look for bulky yarn afghans where the pattern was suitable to three colors and and this is a size six too actually um sorry that's right size six Oop, get me out of the picture and but I figured I could probably get away with using it with these yarns with the size 5 anyway. If you use the right size hook, uh, one would just be looser than the other. Anyway, then I, I had made another order. <laughs> More yarn. It's addicting. Anyway, I found these uh, Premier Sophie, Sophie, Premier Sophie from Hirschner's, and I got these in a few different colors. They were on a really good price. You can see the the uh, thickness of them. They've got kind of a fuzziness to them, really soft, and just loved it. But I was going through the different colors that I'd ordered and I realized I can add another color to my afghan that I want to make. So that gives me, I think it was about 15 or 1600 yards, maybe 1300 yards of yarn to make an afghan with. That'll make a nice sized afghan. So I'm just trying to figure out what what would make the best pattern for that. Do I want to do stripes, um, you know, color block? Um, and then I found this afghan, and it uses two two strands of size six yarn together with a herringbone stitch to make this. And I love the look of it but it would need to be a striped thing. But I'm wondering, you know, do I do, you know, two, two of these together or do I want to blend them and do like two of these and then these two together and then these two together and then these two together to make, you know, a kind of a blending uh, afghan so the colors just kind of are blending all the way through. I, don't, I can't decide what to do and I've been struggling over this for a couple weeks now so if you have any suggestions um, or opinions I would love to hear below even if you have a pattern that you think that this yarn would go good with these three yarns are size 5 sorry these three yarns are a size 5 and these are a size 6 this one is a size 6 um, so if you have a suggestion for a pattern or for a color combo or a color order even, I would love to hear it because, you know, I think I've decided on this one, um, but I'm not set on it. So please share your opinions on that. I need the, the hive mind brainstorming uh, feel here of, of getting some input. So... Anyway, thank you for joining me in my hobby room and uh, talking about one thing that I love to do, and that is crochet. So I hope you'll join me next time. Please 
feel free to put down suggestions and I'd love to hear from you guys. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Bye.